So the new game is here and that means we get a whole new load of icons in here. We've got obviously a lot of the oldies and goldies, but in terms of the new ones, they look semi-decent this year. Bale being the star-studded one, there's obviously a lot that have been missed out that hopefully we get at some point but it will be interesting to see how this year does go but in terms of the new icon design it's pretty similar i'm very interested to see where these icons go because last year we got a fair amount of different variations that i think is going to just be tenfold this year again and in terms of the categories we've got we have got goats which i think is self-explanatory we have the top tier which is just under then we have average to good so semi-decent players that more than likely will last a few months maybe even a month and then they start to deteriorate pretty quickly we have the week one legends which is pretty again self-explanatory you can have them for like a good week maybe even two and that's it they become pretty much discard because more promo cards, more promo packs, and we are now getting icons in our champs rewards as well. And then we do have the L category also. Players that unfortunately just have no position being in your team. So let's start it off then. So obviously if I was looking at someone like a top tier, I think in terms of a centre back, we'd be looking at somebody like a Blanc or a Rio Ferdinand. And pretty much most years, we will have the exact same theory with every single icon, gold players. The only people that you can never really kind of test is either brand new people into the game or brand new upgrades. So for instance, say if we had someone like Endrick, for instance, we've never seen him in the game before. We wouldn't know technically how well he will do. Now we know full well what body type he's going to be, how tall he is. Naturally, the, the kind of stats are already being released. He's a 77 gold common, but we wouldn't know if there's any extra body type they can make. Sometimes they can add a custom. We've seen it with R9. We've seen it with Mbappe, Messi, Ronaldo. Um, I think, I don't think Haaland's got one as of yet, but I can imagine he will have one very soon. If they were to go and do that straight away, then that would take the perception a little bit more skewed. Whereas the icons, we know most of them. So if I was looking, for instance, at an L category, I think personally for me, Ian Rush now at this point doesn't really get in anywhere. It, it's just a bit unfortunate for him. Same with the likes of someone like a closer. I must admit, maybe they could be in the week one. So for instance, we could go with him there. If I was to look at somebody down this icon, love the pin featured as well in the tier list. That's just, it makes so much more sense having this like this, where I can just scroll. If I was looking, for instance, somebody who is just non-existent. Now, hopefully there isn't a lot because... Naturally, a lot of them could be used in the first week, but somebody like, for instance, a Varon, I, 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 like, I like him as a player. In terms of an icon, he is so bog standard of a center mid. You think of every single card that you could go with. So, for instance, if we was to go over to Footbin, they have now got all the players in FC25. For instance, we were going into position. We'll just go a standard center mid. We'll go a little bit down, we'll say, into the 86s. You look at someone like Pedri, you're looking pretty much the same. The main thing Pedri's got is, is dribbling and passing. When we look at someone like Varon, 75 pace. Pretty standard, I'm not expecting him to have 90 plus, that's fair enough. 81 shooting, okay, good passing, dribbling's average, defending's a little bit on the weak side, and physical is uh, kind of mid to good in that aspect as well. If it was to look at someone like, for instance, a Modric, he's still got 72 pace, 76 shooting, 88, 87. You've got cards that, like, he's he is so much more downgraded now in terms of his kind of finish of his career. Yeah, he's still on that same wavelength. Varon needs to be better if they're going to put him in any sort of team. You go a bit further down, we look at someone like... Go with a Milinkovic Savic. Obviously, the pace is a little bit less, but shooting's one off. Passing and dribbling, pretty much the same. He has a bit more physicality. Defending's a few better as well. They are cards that will cost literally like 4k 5k at a maximum veron at the minimum has to be 65k or 60k whatever the discard price is unless they've changed that so that already is kind of telling me i'm not going to buy him at all whereas somebody like kind of like an ian wright I'd, I'd say he's in probably average to good on the first week same as kind of rush and also the same as someone like i saw him was um shevchenko 
I did see him a second ago. They are kind of the type of players that would be in the standard one week. Because after that, we've got strikers that can beat them. He's here. So when we look at the kind of these sort of strikers, and it's mainly strikers a lot of the time. Because obviously, they have got a bit more pace than everybody else. Shooting's decent. But realistically, you're looking at the price as well. When you're looking at the likes of the kind of mid to lower tier icons, especially a few weeks in, you're looking at about 100, 400k maybe. That is purely to get the icon in there. Now, in previous years where we had the chemistry that had to be linked by the position rather than by the squad, it made sense. If I had a striker that is an icon, I could link my left wing and right wing with some standard links and then I could link off them. Whereas now, it doesn't really make a difference. So I can have a left wing who is La Liga, a Prem striker, a Bundesliga right wing. But as long as the right back is La Liga, the goalkeeper is Prem, you can link everything together like that. So it means that the icons definitely don't have as much power in that position. If it was running through, we'll kind of go from the bottom to top as much as possible. I'd say Balak would come in more towards an average to good. Probably closer to the good than average at this point at the start of the game. But I do think he does lose his source very quickly. Like I said, the different variations will be massive this year. And I think with the fact that we are getting icons in rank one of champs rewards every single week. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to get there. But there is a lot of people that are good enough to win that 15-0 and every single weekend. That's going to put a massive pressure on the icon market, the supply of them, then potentially the demand, and then also the cost of them as well. So either they are going to do a lot of icons, that means the base icons are just kind of worthless from the get-go, or they have got something different than where they are planned that we just don't know about. I think Barnes would be more into my average to good. I think he's a pretty decent winger, and he's definitely just a little bit better than the week one. Good old Bex. I would say the same as well. Don't think I'd quite say a top tier icon at his 88, but he does gradually get better. So Campbell, I really like him. Um, I think he's a very underrated center back at the start of the game, especially. I, I, I don't know if I'd put him in Rio's category though. I think I would. No, I think I would. I think in terms of he's not in the absolute top. No, no, he's got to be. He's got to be on the high end. I'm thinking Rio, Rio and Blanc for me would be absolutely clear. Now I'll go average to good for him. I think he would hold a position, but he would be outplaced. Like Virgil's already taken a place, regardless. That that's just a standard with a gold. Let alone then having to pick either an icon that's better than him. Uh, his price will be nice, but he wouldn't necessarily be the best option from an icon. I would say. Ashley Cole, this year a little bit different, which is nice. It's kind of a different uh, kind of game mode for him or a different, um, almost different play style of how you go with this game. Obviously, they've changed quite a lot already. Left bat wise, though, I'd probably say week one, to be fair, because realistically, he's going to cost a lot. Roberto Carlos is absolutely light years. And then you've got so many good left backs this year again. Furlan Mendy. You've then obviously got Davies. You've got then the women, Sakina, Rolfo. You've, you're missing out even Teo then as well. And even Grimaldo, to be fair to him. It, it's just nuts. Crespo, I'd say week one as well. Unfortunately, he probably is close to being... Pretty unusable and usable with that power header plus, but I'd say week one if you have just packed him and that's it. Then we've obviously got Desai. Start a game, I'd say top tier. I think he can play that centre back or you could even squeeze him into the DM as much as I would like to. I think that's better for a different variation of the card. So I would stick him in that centre back role still and he'll absolutely boss it. Essien, start a game, solid DM. If you've used him from last year, this year is just exactly the same for him. He holds that CDM position wonderfully. Gattuso, oh, he's, he's so close to being an L. He really, I don't know what they did to him. Once we had the base, mid and prime, he was like a different player. Like he genuinely was so much better as that base card. Last year, he was just unrecognizable. I don't know if... 
they've just changed the card entirely because they didn't really go crazy on what upgrades and downgrades they gave icons, taking away them base mid primes. But I do think this version, unfortunately, is just not there. Hadji, on the other hand, I'd say he's, he's probably up there in a good icon for a cam at the start, but most definitely does drag down pretty quickly. And I'd say someone like Raquelmi would be the kind of counterpart to that, to potentially be in an L in my opinion. Luis Hernandez, I like him. I think he would probably just be a one week. Same as Keen. Keen needs an upgrade massively. You could even argue, to be fair to him, that he actually could be more of an L. But I think if you kind of take away that center mid factor and go with more of a DM that can pass, it works pretty well. Like you add a shadow to him. He's got that in him. He's not necessarily this box to box that works. So I think as a DM, you could have a, you could have a week with him. After that, I'd say you'd probably have better. Same as closer. We we obviously know the lower rated icons will all be there if if anything. Uh, Clivert would be the same. <laughs> Lampard definitely would be the same. He's they're just they need the upgrade. That's the kind of point of having the base mid prime. It was to know that in the future they are gonna get a better version, and hopefully we do get it pretty quickly with a lot of them. Larson would be there. Makalele, to be fair, would be next to Essien. I think both of them are incredible DMs. They kind of went back and forth last year. This year, I can see them just being the same as well. Nedved, I'd say now is more towards an average left mid. Last year was horrendous. This year looks like it could be slightly better for him, but it will be interesting to see where his upgrades go because I think that was the biggest problem with him was he just really didn't get anything that was taking him past that meta threshold. He was kind of good, but there was already like 15 players over the line that just took his spot completely. Petit, I'd go one under Makalele and Essien. I think they're good. Same as Rykard. They both kind of go together as well. More in that average to good zone for the start of the game. Perez, I'd probably say just week one, to be honest with him. He, he's kind of that disappointing one at this point. Same as Sadorf. He, he used to be an absolute monster. Now, I, I just don't see it in him, unfortunately. I think cards have just got to that point where... An 87 is just no longer spectacular. Torres, easily in that top tier. In a, a kind of previous versions, kind of going into that top end of the 90 plus, he could be GOAT standard, but I think by the time he gets the upgrades, he's always in that top tier. He just doesn't break into the Eusebio factor of the game. Trezeguet will be kind of just more towards the bottom as well. Suker... To be fair to him, I will give him the benefit because last year he was very, very good at the start of the game. Van Persie, uh, yeah, I'd probably go there. I don't know if I'd quite go top tier for him. I think, again, kind of like a, a lower version of Torres. Once he gets the upgrades, brilliant. But right at the start, I think he's just good. And, and that's kind of about it. Same with Vidic. Vidic is, is that average centre-back to start with. Very good defensive and physical abilities. But when it comes to the upgrades, the Galazzo that we remember, then into anything extra, he just becomes an absolute monster. Vieira, obviously making it into our first GOAT category. I think that one was pretty self-explanatory with him. Xabi Alonso, Probably more towards one week. I think that there will be a, I'd say even surprising amount. There will be a lot of kind of one week cards because that is where icons have gone now. And I think that's just down to naturally how many promos we have, how many players we have. Now we have the men and female in the same game. It's very hard to share that spotlight and still have icons that represent like the best of the players when they're also trying to give that spotlight to Virgil, Bellingham, Mbappe, then into heroes. There's so many pots, something has to give. And I think icons, the lower standard, especially when you're looking at 100 and, 105, 115 icons we have now, it, it's going to be very difficult to put a spotlight on every single one. There's always has to be some lower end. Zambrata will put himself in the top easily. Zola would go into more the average to good. I think with him, he's kind of Del P. Del P is the kind of better version in my opinion. Zola's great as a base starter card, but I don't know if I'd quite go into the top. Czech, on the other hand, I'd, I'd say a top keeper. I, I think most of the keepers in terms of icons have done really, really well. Um, Owen, to be fair to him... I, I kind of do like Owen on the start. And I know there is quite a few other strikers that would be in that sort of list as well. But I don't know. Owen has just a little bit of sauce with him. Schweinsteiger. 
he has a good balance, to be fair to him. I'd probably put him at a very low average, but just above the likes of kind of like a Keen or, or a Gattuso, because even though he's not necessarily a DM, his centre mid work, it's just the pace. And I think this year, we've had a massive downgrade on a lot of people's pace. It seems like they're trying to combat that kind of pace abuse completely and try and make it that way where it could really enhance Feinsteiger this year. Gerard, on the other hand, I'd, I'd have to go with him next to Lampard, to be honest. I, I just don't see him being that card again. Herrero... Oh, very much like Puyo, to be honest. I think wherever I go with him, he'd kind of go there as well. I think centre-back-wise, what, we've got Coleman. I, I don't really like Coleman as a centre-back, to be honest. With the passing and shooting he's got, he is destined for a DM role. But if we was looking at centre-backs at this kind of low category, we've got the likes of Puyo. I think then next up would be the likes of Berezi. And we know where Berezi's going, so... I think if you was to go centre back, I'd probably choose them lower than uh, Des uh, than Sol Campbell. So I think they have to be week one. I don't see many of them really taking that spotlight anytime soon. Coleman, on the other hand, as a centre back, he'd be week one. As a DM, potentially into that average good, but obviously the position would have to change. Loud drop. Very, very much week one at, a, at an absolute minimum. Average to good for Rooney. I think he's he's nothing too special, nothing too rubbish. Uh, he's kind of in that middle ground. Once he gets the upgrades, he, he's my guy. Obviously, Skulls. Uh, Skulls is such a, is such a poor one as well. That defending. I think I think Skulls, to be honest, would join Varon. It, it's unfortunate because his game doesn't represent FIFA or FC. It just doesn't. <laughs> That's just the unfortunate truth of it. He could ping a pass on an absolute thread. It will get it every single time. Was never that quick. Had an absolute rocket, but it was more, it weren't as consistent. It was very much just in a moment, he'd absolutely bag one. Defensive ability, even himself, said was atrocious. No physicality to him, no height. Unfortunately, passing is not the only measure of stats that we need in FC. So in terms of an icon, it's probably the worst one you could get. So we'll just kind of go with it. Whereas player-wise, incredible. Van der Sar obviously goes into the top. Butra will make himself into that top tier quite easily. We then have Cannavaro. Good, I'd say. I don't know if I'd quite go any more than good. Jarzinho obviously puts himself into the absolute top. Figo at the start, I'd say a very good level of card. Ribery, unfortunately, shown his true colours last year as well, with obviously the fact that he just wasn't as good as everybody wanted. Like, he's definitely up there as a very, very good icon to get, especially at the start of the game, but he just never carried on. I was, I was very much convinced to think what Bale will do this year is what he would have done last year. And unfortunately, it just, it just didn't really happen. Raquel me, I'd say more week one. Very uh, kind of similar to the likes of, of a Sadov. Did he? Where did he go? Did he go back into the pile? Oh, he's, he's, I'm not going there. Yeah, he's going there. We have then have Schmeichel. He'll go into top tier. I, I love Schmeichel in this game, especially from the, the kind of ending of FC24. Very, very good keeper. Same as Casillas. He will obviously be up there as well. The icon keepers have definitely put in an absolute shift. Kelly Smith, I'd say a very high good rating for her. Cantona would be in top tier, not in GOAT. Drogba at the start of the game, I'd actually go into the GOAT category. He is just brilliant. If you get, if you was to manage to get him on day one, just see how good he is. It takes him a little bit once uh, kind of we get a few months into the game because he then needs that next spark to really light him alive. And sometimes they just don't get it. Eto was a very, very big standard of that last year. And obviously with Eto, it went from like zero to 100 in about eight months. Whereas Drogba consistently got them upgrades and kept himself in the loop. At the start of the game, Drogba is an absolute king. Lam, I'd say more is a uh, kind of good card. Lineker, I'd probably go the same. I think if, if obviously Ian Wright, uh, Lineker and Owen are in there, then they'd kind of go in that same category together. Socrates or Socrates will go into there. Stoichkov will go into there. Van Nistelrooy will be one week, definitely. 
We then look into Dalglish. He obviously is going to be top tier in himself. Kaka will be there as well. Bobby Moore is the other centre back that I was thinking of. He, uh, he'll probably be one week. To be fair to him, his pace, his his defensive ability is fantastic, but pace will be a massive factor when it comes to it. They just get so much slower, it seems. Nesta will be there as well. And also, if I can find Berezi, he's obviously going in there as the last one. Unfortunately, they're very good defensively. They just need the rest of the stats. Alan Shearer, obviously coming in with the pace. I think he would be deserving to be in that kind of average category when it comes to an icon. And again, when they do get more upgrades... It kind of makes them semi-usable, but by then we more than likely have better upgrades again in other fields also. Hugo Sanchez will obviously go into there. Zanetti, I'd probably say week one until he gets an upgrade. Abile, to be fair to her, she's earned the spot. Definitely in that top tier. Burkamp, probably one week if, if I'm being brutal for him. Top tier for Roberto Carlos, obviously. We then have the likes of Del P. I'd put into a very good category, but not too crazy. Hullet, I think that no one needs to argue with Hullet. Same as Matthias. He is obviously up there as well. Rivaldo, on the other hand, I think with remembering that the very start of him coming in, he has no weak for whatsoever. He'd be very much an average card. Xavi, on the other hand, I'd say it'd be about the same. Him and Perlo together, they may not have the greatest defensive ability, but running that ball forward, making them passes is absolutely exquisite for them. And they do it really, really well. So I think they are kind of like the exceptions. There might be a few centimeters that you think, well, that's what their job does. But in terms of how they do it in, in everything they've got, the Tiki Taka is absolutely spectacular for them. Baggio, probably more into a kind of low good, I'd say. Georgie Best. Now, this is the big thing because I, I can't really have Jarzinho, Best, and Garinch all in there in that right wing because I do think, and obviously Bale adding that as well this year, because Jarzinho smoked them. Like, I didn't think he could, but he came into the game and he was brilliant. So I think for me, Best is kind of out the fold a little bit and obviously Garinch would go into that top tier. I think for me, Bale will take his spot most definitely. Bale looks and feels absolutely nuts in this game. So I I've just got to go with him. Casillas would obviously be in the top tier as well. We then have the likes of Buffon. Again, phenomenal card. I, I got to put him in the GOAT. There there's no question about it. I, I think for me, he has to be in there. Yashin, I'd go into the top tier. Normally, once he gets the upgrade, he's kind of back to his old ways. But it definitely takes him a little bit of time to get there. A lot of people just like him purely for the hat. Which, again, I completely understand. But I do think for him... He just needs that extra space. Whereas for me, I do think Van der Sar and Buffon will be the two key keepers this year. We obviously have had a 92, uh, I think it's Nadine, I want to say keeper. Unfortunately for her, she is, is just not going to be it. She's five foot eight, like most of the keepers that we've seen from the women's. Other than being a brand new icon and maybe surviving a week one, I just think she'll get absolutely trolled on. So it's, it's just easier to just put her down there anyway. Then we have the likes of Eusebio. Very easy for him. He will obviously go into the GOAT. Other GOATs, we've obviously got somebody like, I'd say Henri. I think Henri has put himself back in that map. When we look at kind of last year with him, this year is going to be the exact same. The stats have been upgraded, as we know, as previous years. All icons have pretty much stayed the same. He is going to be running the show. Sauer would be top tier. Zico would be top tier. Raul would easily be top tier. We then have the likes of Bobby Cholton. And as you can see, we're getting to the end. You pretty much know that where you're going with this. But we have had a few new icons into the game that I will show you before we get there. When you go into Footbin at the moment, they will be updating it all anyway. So you won't, you might see more than this when we go and do it. But obviously we look at someone like uh, kind of like all the new icons. We've got Julie, Aya, Lotta. Um, you've then got P Pichion, I want to say pronounce it, and Taram. There's some interesting cards, most definitely. Like Taram, I'm not going to lie. I probably know, I, I think it's his sons. I know his sons more in terms of how they play than he did. I've never really heard of his name other than being the dad. So 
I'm not too sure on him, like, realistically how good he's going to be. Um, it, it looks pretty solid. Stat-wise, looks good. Decent right back. But, again, stats can definitely fool a lot of people. I think he'll probably be just be top tier. I don't see him taking over Carfu or Carlos Alberto by any stretch. You have Pichion. Again, another nice one. Decent pace. Obviously coming in for the women's again. It's going to be another interesting one to see. Whether we get anything decent from her, she's five foot four. That's kind of the big deal, really, with a lot of them. Is is going to be the fact they are a lot smaller, but we have seen some cards do really well. I think Aya is going to look really, really nice, and then Julie, she looks kind of, I'd say, average to good. I think we've got a lot of top tier Sour Abile. I just don't see her taking too much with it, to be fair. And Lotta, to be fair, does look like an absolute in beast. Whether she beats Kelly Smith is going to be the big question. I would say that we'd look at something along the lines of average to good, average to good. And that would kind of be everybody there, especially the new ones. When we come into finishing the rest of the GOATs, obviously you put the pretty standard ones in. Ronaldinho, Zidane, Pushgas, Pele, Maldini, Ham, Cruyff. I don't think there's any questions with them. They are always there. It's very hard to break this group and it's very hard to get away from this group. No matter of the, the kind of meta ability of players, they are always the absolute top. Now you could argue between Carfu and Carlos Alberto, but I think upgrades will take them to that next level. I don't think they're there consistently. And then obviously we've got Prinz and Van Basten. I'd probably go both of them to be in a very average category and that will be everybody so let me know down below if you agree disagree have you tried anybody new yet leave a comment down below what you think they are going to be the list make sure you like and subscribe and i'll catch you all for the next one peace